Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Selena and you are watching So Small Somerset. Today's video is all about my plans for March and a few sewing updates and tidbits that I've had this month so far. So the first thing I want to talk about is a new challenge that is going around on Instagram and YouTube. If you are a regular watcher of sewing YouTube channels, you may have heard this channel, this challenge already. The challenge is Frugal Frox 2021. This challenge is being run by Sam and Ruan. So Sam is at Frugalissima on YouTube and on Instagram. And Ruan is the Yorkshire showgirl here again on YouTube and on Instagram. The Frugal Frox challenge is here to get our thinking caps on, to get us looking out on the internet and looking and diving into our stashes here. So the challenge comes in four parts. Part one, choose a free sewing pattern. Now this is really important and links back to the frugal part of the challenge that they're setting. It's really getting us to kind of think wise, think about sustainability, thinking about not having to waste money if we don't really need to. So I spent my time and I've looked at my own fabric stash and on the internet and jumped down a rabbit hole along with many other people to find some really good free sewing patterns. Now I was helped out along the way by um, at Sewn Sustainability who did an amazing blog on all the free patterns that she could find out there on the internet at the moment. And from her list I managed to find one of the first patterns I'm going to talk to you about today. Part two of this challenge is to choose a fabric from your stash. This is really important, again with the frugal, that it's to use up fabric that's been in your stash. Now, I've watched a few videos already and they, like me, have got a few bits of fabric in the stash that they bought that didn't quite come out the way they wanted or they really liked it and it's just been sat there afraid to be used. So part two is get those fabrics out of your stash, match them with the pattern you've got in part one and make them into a dress, which leads us to part three. We need to make the dress in the month of March. Really good on filming this video in March. And the final part of the challenge is to reveal dress on March the 31st. Now there are prizes linked to this challenge and if you want to take part in yourself, please go and look at um, Sam and Rowan's channels. I will tag them below to get more information. But if you want to take part and be in a chance to win a prize, you need to reveal your dress over on Instagram using the hashtag Frugal Frogs 2021. So I've had a thought about what I want to do for this challenge and I have three patterns and three fabrics. However, I have two knit patterns and one knit fabric and one woven pattern and two woven fabrics. I'm going to go over them now. So the first pattern I have was a freebie from Love Sewing Magazine. So come from the internet or it could be a pattern that you've received free from um, a sewing subscription, which is this one here. This is my first possible pattern choice. I am looking at view B, and this is the two-in-one maxi dress. Um, I just like the style, the flow, and I think this would be a great dress for spring, summer. Um, this pattern is a bit limited on its sizings. It goes from sizes eight to 24. I don't have the, um, body measurements on the back of the pattern but the finished garment measurements go from a size 8 with bust 89 centimeters hips 100 centimeters and bust for the b is 114 centimeters so there is a big difference between bust of a and bust of b and then we go up to a size 24 um, with a bust of 126 centimeters and hips of 137 for view a and then a bust of 151 for view b so this is my first knit pattern option. I'm feeling the maxi um, knit dress vibe at the moment because my second pattern, which I will put here, is a pattern I found via Sustainability's blog and that is from the pattern company Halla. The pattern is the Agnes Swing Dress. Now I've seen a really lovely photo that the pattern company have produced um, in a version they've made up and it's the full length maxi version. So this dress comes with five um, dress options in a variety of lengths. It comes in a variety of sleeve designs. So I like the long maxi dress version with the long sleeves, a bit close fitting. Again, another maxi knit dress. Um, the Agnes Swing dress is 
much better for size inclusivity. It starts with the size 00, zero with a bust of 30 inches, waist 22 inches and hip of 32 inches and it goes all the way up to a size 30 with a bust of 55 inches, a waist of 47 inches and a hip of 59 inches. So this pattern is available from Halla and to get it you have to um, join their Facebook group and then from their Facebook group they give you the link to this pattern. So those are my two knit option patterns and the fabric that I have for both of those because I have enough of it is this gorgeous um, knit fabric. I think it's um, a viscose jersey, it's got the flow and feel of a viscose. Um, this was from my big um, pattern D stash, so I'm not sure of where it came from or its true composition. But I really like this pattern, and I really like the pop of yellow, which will, if I choose this one, this one will work really well for another Instagram challenge that's happening at the moment to raise awareness for endometriosis being run by um, So What If I Sew, and it's so yellow for endo. So this, if I chose this fabric, would also help me achieve sewing some yellow for endo. Now, I'm not a big yellow lover. Um, I don't have any purely yellow fabrics in my stash, and I don't think it's a colour that really suits me. Even in my previous ready-to-wear wardrobe, I didn't have much yellow. So I feel this pop of yellow, this, and then nice big splashes of yellow, would really hit that for Jess's challenge as well. So this is my fabric. I have over three meters of this so I know it's plenty for either of those two um, knit patterns. So choice one to make is do I choose the knit? If I do this is my fabric but then which pattern do I go for? Do I go for the maxi dress or the swing dress from Halla? Now pattern option number three is another magazine subscription. This is an older pattern. I believe this is out of print. And this came when I subscribed with To Sew Magazine. So this is the Simplicity K1699. It's a, a multi-pattern, but because this is frugal frocks, I need to make a dress. I'm focusing on this one. Now, I have always really liked this dress style. It's princess seamed, a little raglan sleeve as well, and a little A-line skirt always drawn to this style so it would be nice to get this one made up if I choose this for my frugal frocks. The thing I do like about big four patterns is the back comes with a wealth of knowledge, wealth of um, information. It is in UK, British and it does come in European. Um, it's good to be able to transfer between the two because the British um, sizings and material requirements are all done in yardish Yard, yardings, yard, yard, yardish. I'm not, I'm sure how we say that. Um, whereas the European sizes is all written in meters. So I tend to buy my fabric in meters, but I need the inches because I tend to remember my measurements in the inches form. So I have both of those sets of information. If you can kind of transfer between the two, this particular pattern is from a size eight to sixteen. Um, I believe you can get the second pattern which will take you up to the size 24 and it covers um, a bust for the size 8 of 31 and a half inches and it goes all the way up to the 22 with a bust of 46. Waist for the 8 is 24, waist for the 24 is 39 inches and then the hips is 33 and a half for the 8 all the way up to a 48 in the 24. So not as wider range as the Halla swing dress but it gives you lots of options and then in terms of a one pattern there are lots of then other things you can pair with it in order to make a compact wardrobe. So that's the pattern. I have two fabric options for this pattern. I either have this more muted tone fabric, I believe these are both kind of cotton, lawny cotton blends, again from my big D stash. So this one is a series of semicircles in these earthy tones and the second one is again a bit more of a muted palette compared to the knit fabric indeed. Um, this grey greeny, um, it's a lot more greener in real life um, with these kind of floral motifs running across it that I think they're both subtle enough or the right level to kind of be emphasised 
by the um, the elements of the pattern. So these are my options for Frugal Fox 2021. So I now have the rest of the month to work out which one I'm going to make and then get to make it so I can reveal it on the 31st of March. So the other plans I have for March, because you know me, I tend to crack out a few every month. Um, I have one, two, another three options for myself, hopefully a dress for my daughter, as well as the um, Frugal Fox dress. So one thing that has helped me with my sewing plans this month is I have, for the first time, printed out some patterns using a pattern printer. Now I have gone to, Net Printer. So Net Printer is a company based in Plymouth, which is relatively local to me here in Somerset. Um, I was brought there, they were brought to my attention via the Zip Effect and to Tamlin at Sew On On The Time. Um, both mentioned those in previous videos and Instagram posts. Um, and I was even more helped so I was helped even more so by Tamlin when she recommended that she uses the plan printing option they have rather than the sewing pattern option because the paper is slightly thicker. And as I've mentioned before, I prefer a thicker paper. So I got a couple of patterns printed. I've got the Mila pattern, um, Mila dungaree pattern by Tilly and the Buttons here. I've got the Sew Over It Georgie dress pattern printed. I also got two other patterns of which those two I'm actually going to sew up this month. So I'm going to talk through my first one. First one, which I think is very high on my sewing to-do list this month, is the Kilo Wrap Dress. So I was gifted this pattern for Christmas by my mum. So the updated Kilo um, comes with two varieties for the pattern. You can either make the dress a bit faded here, or they've now updated it to include a jumpsuit option. So I'm gonna make the dress, and I plan to make the dress. This is, and then I have the three pattern pieces from net printers printed there. And I'm gonna make the dress up in this lovely um, viscose jet knit here. Um, it's a really nice uh, navy blue with this rust pattern, and I think it's a nice repeating pattern that will really go well with the, the elements of the kilo wrap dress. So again, quite a good meterage of it here. It's got a good drape, so I think it will hold really well. And I knew as soon as I saw this fabric, I had that pattern in mind. So I then had to get the pattern, I had the fabric first. Um, so I've got the pattern for Christmas, so now I can combine the two and make a really nice um, maxi dress for that spring, summer, transfer season. I'm going to make the long sleeve version because I tend to sit more on the colder side um, with our UK weather so I know I will definitely be comfortable with a long sleeve version. So that is next plan for this month. The final pattern I got printed by Net Printers was the By Hand London Anna dress. So Again, I've liked this one for a while. I picked the pattern up in the Black Friday sale before Christmas and then using um, this print option because there's a lot of pages. I'm normally a print PDF off at home, stick them together sort of person. But when I kind of looked at these series of patterns, there were a lot of pages and it was, even for me, felt like it was going to be a big ask. So I thought, right, let's give this a crack. Let's have a go at printing from a printing company and I'm really pleased with how well this came out. I actually ordered them um, this week and within six minutes of me placing my order I had the email to tell me that my, my patterns were printed and they were dispatched and I got them two days later. So I cannot fault the service at Netprinter. I will tag their website down below. So by hand London Anna. I'm going to make the maxi version of this dress. This dress comes in the maxi length and it also comes in a shorter length. Um, the bodice has two options. There's a V-neck bodice or a higher, more a high uh, neckline for the bodice. I'm going to go for the higher neckline in the maxi version and I'm going to do it in this gorgeous crepe by Lisa Comfort Fabrics. So when I put up my makes for February, you will see that I have used the same fabric but in the other colourway to make up a uh, top pattern I did last month. 
and I've loved using this fabric. It's um, a crepe fabric. I think it's got a slight polyester content because it doesn't crease, which again, I think will be perfect for what I envision this maxi dress to be. I want it to be an everyday day maxi and be able to move around, do go about doing the motherly things I do. So therefore having this really nice non-creasy fabric, I think will be brilliant um, for my vision. So I've got three meters of this. Unfortunately, you can't get this anymore. I managed to pick this up in um, their end of end of line sale. Um, it was a good um, good price. I got this from Sew Rivet themselves. You may still be able to get it on a few other um, websites, but sadly, Sew so Over It have decided not to stock it or print it anymore. I'm so pleased they got both colorways. I love the top I've made in that one, so I can't wait to make the other dress in this one. So that is another plan for this month. My last plan for myself for this month, over above, I've got Frugal Frocks, the Kilo and the Anna. The last plan is a jumpsuit. So I managed to pick up on a Facebook marketplace deal, the Marigold 2-in-1 um, jumpsuit pattern. So you can either have it as the jumpsuit or the trousers. I'm going to go for the jumpsuit version. This was um, a freebie version of the pattern that came with Molly Makes, but you can still buy this pattern from Tilly and the Button themselves. So, going through the jumpsuit, and I have this gorgeous um, fabric here. Again, I'm not sure of the composition. I'm doing really well at sewing up fabrics from my D-Stash um, pickup, but I just think this really nice bold pattern will look really lovely in that kind of jumpsuit. Um, something I could wear dress down or dress up. And I think that would be just a really nice spring summer weight. Um, the fabric's not too heavy, it's got a good structure to it. Um, so pretty much opaque, you can't see through it. So yeah, I think the structure and the lightness will make it a really nice spring summer. Um, I think I'll be able to layer it up just to cover up some of the lightness for the spring but then it'll be cool enough to have a jumpsuit ready for the summer. Fingers crossed for a good sunny summer when we get out of the wonderful conditions we're living in at the moment. So Tilly and the Buttons patterns I normally make a size four so I will probably do the same with this one um, and the Marigold jumpsuit um, also has a zip um, opening on the side to enable you to get it in and out which kind of adds to its structure as well as having an elasticated waistband which again I think will be really nice um, to add to the comfort that it won't be too structured or fitted um, in the summer. So that is that plan. My other hope for this month is to do a dress for my daughter. Um, I have a series of dresses that I picked up last year in the Makerist sale. So they did their $2, two euro sale um, and I picked up only children's patterns. So I've got some leftover fabrics from other projects I've made in the last few months that I'm going to try and use some of those fabrics to make her some really nice spring summer dresses. She's getting a little bit bigger this year. So I'm not 100% sure what dress, how, what dress I'm going to make or what fabric because I kind of need to start playing around with printed patterns and fabrics and work out what I've got and what will fit but I hopefully next month we'll be able to show you a nice dress that I've made for my daughter. So those are my plans I'm not going over the top with them this month um, I started writing down my um, March sewing ideas in my sewing journal and then it just got longer and longer and longer before I suddenly realized there is no way I can make all of these in March so I kind of then listed it as my sewing plans and ideas. I've then tagged which ones I will make this month. And then the plan is to do the rest of them in roll them over to April. Um, again, also working out if I were printed or PDFs to help me locate them. As well as Googling many different um, pattern printing companies to work out the best value for what I had um, and what was out there. So this is my sewing journal. A few of us over on Instagram have started to do them. I'm really loving kind of keeping my ideas all in one place. So um, also a Marvel fan. So 
that's an IM group folder. While I remember, I will draw your attention to what I'm wearing today. So this was something I made up in February. This was a pattern test for the lovely Faye at um, Studio Jepson and this was her um, pattern she released last month and it is the WOW ruffle jumper. So elements of this jumper were this nice big ruffle um, on the sleeves just to give it a bit of a WOW. Um, I've made this in leftover Ponty for my Billy dress and then I've done the neckband cuffs and the frill um, in this gorgeous floral scuba which I think complements the blue really well. And it's such a really nice pattern. So I would recommend going over to her Etsy shop and having a look at some of her patterns because I really enjoy making them and her instructions are brilliant for someone, um, whether or not you've been sewing for ages or if this is your first step into sewing. Last few things I want to talk to you about. Um, I was also lucky enough, the pattern sat behind me here is the Sew Over It Rosie pattern. This pattern has been on my... Um, wanting and to sew list for a while um, and I've picked this up on eBay and this is suddenly bumped straight onto my sewing plans um, and ideas list and I think it will be a lovely dress for the summer. Um, I like the wide um, strappy version and then I'm just debating whether or not to add the kind of frilly bit seen here or to keep it plain um, and then again I just love the this box pleat fronted skirt. Um, lots of options so I can't wait to start playing around with that pattern. And then the last thing I've got I want to talk to you about is I have picked up this pack of friction pens. Now, if you've never used friction pens in sewing, I would endeavour you to have a go. Um, I have a series of normal friction pens. Um, what's special about these pens is you can rub them out. Um, what it is, is when you apply heat to them, they disappear which we realized I, I realized it was a heat thing when we used them um, in my previous work for a child to write something out and then we laminated it and once it had been laminated all of the wonderful things we had drawn out had disappeared because the heat had gotten rid of them so obviously when you rub out with the end of the pen you're apl applying friction which is creating heat which rubs out the ink but they've also got this kind of more felty tip version um, in a variety of colors and I use these for drawing on fabric because once you put the iron over them, they disappear. So, and it does say on the listing, I did buy these from Amazon, that they are good for marking on fabric temporarily. So I liked this pack because it had a variety of colours, um, which enables me to hopefully be able to draw on any fabric I've got in a contrasting colour. And then I can see the lines that I have been drawing. So I thought I'd show you these because they were bought specifically for sewing. These are not a, as much as the back talks about colouring in and rubbing out what you've coloured in, these are not a pen for colouring in. These are going to be my sewing companion. So I thought this was a good thing to get out to let you guys know about too. That's all I've got planned for this month. So please do comment below if you've got any suggestions on which pattern I should um, crack on with for my Frugal Frocks challenge. Uh, if you do not already, please subscribe to my channel. Um, click the notification bell if you want to know when I upload a new video, if you do subscribe already. And also please follow me over on Instagram. Um, I am at so small 25 over on Instagram. I'm taking part this year in a posting every day. It's my hashtag Selena's 365 days of sewing. There's a few of us over there who are having a go. We're just trying to do something sewing related every day of the year. I'm doing very well already. We're up to day 66. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I will see you all next time. Bye.